Today I'm going to talk about conditional probability. Uh, you'll use conditional probability, or advertisers use it all the time. Uh, the people who mine data to try to figure something out. Uh, conditional probability is how likely something is if you've already have another assumption in place. So I may say, okay, so what's the probability of you choosing this or you know this happening if this has already happened. So prob of B if A is if if A occurs. That's terrible handwriting today. Prob of B if A occurs. So I have to have something in place ahead of time. And the overall formula for this, that's the nomenclature, or that's the uh, representation, that P, B, slash, A thing. What you're really looking at is how many people, or what's the probability of both of the things happening, so B and A, over just the probability of um, B happening at all. Or sorry, A happening at all. just like that. So I have a total number, uh, I have the probability of A happening, but in order to get to the B, I have to have the, f the other thing happen first. So let's just look at it. It's much easier to explain once you have sort of a, a graphic setup. So I'm going to continue with my idea of using the uh, advertisement subset. I think that makes more sense. So say I have an ad that I'm showing. I saw one on Hulu Plus, and you got a few choices. So say they're doing an emotional setup, and one of them speaks to how you can trust the company, so the trust ad, and the other talks about how exciting the product is. So I have those two choices. From there, I want to look at my demographics as um, families versus individuals. So on one hand, I have families. And on the other hand, I have individuals or singles, whatever it happens to be. So I will say that in my little study, I find that as far as families go, uh, there's, you know, whatever. Of the trust ad, let's say 2,100 uh, family accounts chose that trust ad, whereas 900 chose the excitement ad. On the other hand, uh, when I look at individuals, uh, I'll say 1,800 uh, individuals chose the trust ad, whereas uh, on the, you know, the other end of the spectrum, 1,200 chose excitement that kind of setup. Seems unlikely, most likely the, so let's flip the individuals, because that seems more likely that they would choose excitement, uh, depending on the age, I guess. You want to trust if you're starting to get a little older and you're alone by yourself. So let's just do 1,200 and 1,800. Well, people who mine data would be pulling way more demographics than this, but this is just the simple setup. What I want to know specifically is what's the probability <clears throat> of a uh, of families choosing a, a trust or the excitement ad. I want. I think that this number is probably going to be low here. I kind of want to know what the probability of that happening is. So first off, I have to uh, look at the number of people who chose the excitement ad. Families, assuming they chose excitement. So I'd write it like that. Now, um, to do my normal setup, first thing, uh, to do the uh, denominator, I should say, I need the probability of them choosing the excitement ad at all. To get that information, I need to look at what the total number of responses that I'm using. Uh, that's always important. So the total would be uh, 2,100 plus 900 plus 1,200 plus 1800. Unless I was really dopey when I chose those numbers, of course I did just pull them out of nowhere and didn't prep very much, uh, I should get somewhere around 6,000. 
So that's my uh, total number of uh, uh, ad, ad responses or whatever it happens to be. So now I want to look at, okay, what's the probability of someone choosing the uh, excitement ad? Probability of excite. Not the website, there's not much probability there. Um, so I need to just add up the uh, total number, uh, I mean, of what's the probability of somebody choosing the excitement ad in general? Well, you have 600 or 6,000 total choices, and of the ones that choose the excitement, I'll do the 900 plus 1,800, which should give you somewhere in the range of about 2,700. So 2,700 over 6,000. And right now, for you know, just a minute or so, uh, even though that super reduces, so I was going to say I'm just going to leave it, but I'm just going to go ahead and reduce it as a fraction, and then I'll deal with it. So it reduces down to 9 over 20. So that's my denominator, 9 over 20. On the other side of it, I want to deal with, well, what's the chances of doing B and A together. So what's the probability that you'll be a family and choose excitement? Well, in that case, I'm dealing with 6,000 different responses, and only 900 of those responses fell into that subgroup. So uh, 900 over 6,000 should reduce down to 3 over 20. And from here, I put that 3 over 20 right here in the numerator. So this is a division of fractions, and if I was ever in, worked in 6th grade, and I did work in 6th grade, uh, I know that I should keep that first fraction, flip it, flip the second one, so keep it, flip it, switch it really, and then switch it to multiply. So the 20s cancel. 3 divided by 9 is 1 over 3. So the probability that I will choose a an excitement ad out of uh, or, or that a family will choose an excitement ad is one third. So out of the uh, 2,700 that choose that whole thing I want to deal with just 900 of them. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense. If you just look at the numerators, uh, when you set it up as probabilities, the denominators will generally cancel. So you're really dealing with 900 over 2,700, which is one-third. So that's conditional probability. Uh, sometimes you'll use a tree diagram to do it, just sort of pop in pieces of information out, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So take your little pieces of information, roll them out a little further, should work out fine.